They say that a pilgrimage is as much a journey inward as it is a journey outward. As opposed to a tourist who might travel through many sites, pilgrims let the sites travel through them. And tourists who return home with a heavier load, pilgrims return home with a much lighter load. Pilgrimages are an opportunity to encounter God. But are they necessary? Do we have to go on a journey that involves self-sacrifice and allows for lots of time for personal reflection, a journey that takes us out of our comfort zone in order to encounter God? Those are some of the questions that we will be exploring today. And we begin with one such story. If you're like me, your soul needs some alone time. How about a month as you walk 800 kilometers? That should do. My solo adventure took me by plane from Toronto to Paris, and then by train to a little town called Saint-Jean-Pied-de-Port. It's on the edge of the Pyrenees Mountains, which separate France and Spain. This is the most common starting point along the Camino. So, far from being alone, I was immediately surrounded by new pilgrims like me. To my surprise, most of them also traveled here alone. But, as if by instinct, we quickly became a nomadic tribe. We walked together, cooked together, drank Spanish wine together, and worshipped together. But still, I treasured those mornings, dark and chilly, when I ventured out alone. I would talk to God as the sun rose behind me, illuminating the rolling hills. And a month after I began, as I approached Santiago de Compostela, I made sure to end the Camino just as I started it, alone, just me and God in prayer. Sitting with me now is the person who had that personal experience, Chris Dimitrenko. He's one of our Salt and Light producers. And with him is someone who also had a very similar experience, Jillian Cantor. She's a former producer at Salt and Light Television. Hello, so, so that people who maybe have no idea what the Camino is, the Camino de Santiago, what is the Camino, Chris? Well, it's a very, very long walking <laughs> pilgrimage. <laughs> And uh, you can start at different points, but one of the most frequent starting points starts just inside the border with France and goes all the way to near the west coast of Spain, so about 800 kilometers. So, the, and it, so it ends at the shrine of, of Santiago de Compostela of, of St. James. That's right, the Apostle St. James, it's believed that he actually is buried there because the tradition holds that he actually preached there um, following Jesus' death and resurrection. Uh, he preached there and, uh, and he did missionary activity there. He did eventually go back to Jerusalem where he was right. martyred and beheaded, yeah. but his bones were believed to be taken back there and buried where it is now Santiago de Compostela. Okay. So 800 kilometers, uh, how long did it take you to do this? You did it for the whole month? We did it for about 25 days. Um, uh -huh. We, my husband and I, didn't have the opportunity to, the timeline really, to take, to do the entire 800. So our goal was to walk um, it was about 680 kilometers um, and take about 30 days. So the 800, sorry, so the 800 kilometers is the month. It did, yeah, I think so. that would probably take about 32 days. I don't know and if you map it Because I know people that have done two weeks. Yeah. So what, in order to be a pilgrim, in order to be considered a pilgrim and receive um, your Compostela at the end, uh, you have to walk at least 100 sorry, kilometers. So to receive, like, you get a stamp? That's a certificate you, you yeah. that yeah. says you walked a long way. Yes. <laughs> so you have to walk at least... At many? least 100 or mm -hmm. bicycle 200. Oh, 100 kilometers. Nothing, Anybody right? can do that. Okay, so wait, let's back up because... So we're talking about a very specific pilgrimage. That's right. How would you define pilgrimage? Well, I think it's very important in this particular context to say that uh, we are going to the relics of one of the apostles of Jesus. And this is the reason why this became popularized um, 
in the in the year 18, 819 rather that's yeah, when yeah. the body was found and that's something that has been confirmed by popes since then leo the 13th it was reinforced by john paul ii who came there in 1982 and pope benedict so you're saying that that the purpose for your pilgrimage was because there's an apostle buried there i think that's the reason why the pilgrimage began and mm -hmm. the reason why it's it's very popular um, people go for, for various different reasons, and I'm sure we're going to get into that. Yeah, okay. But this pilgrimage wouldn't exist without the Apostle St. James, and so you can't remove from it this, this Catholic element. Mm -hmm. But I mean, the concept of pilgrimage is a concept that exists in our faith, and it's not specific to the Camino de Santiago. Do we have to be going to a shrine for it to be a pilgrimage? I think you have to have a destination. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and and that might be a personal destination. It might not be something that's acknowledged by the Catholic Church to be a shrine or to have mm -hmm. any particular okay, yeah. Catholic Church official significance. Mm -hmm. But that it Graceland. has... Graceland. A lot of people do pilgrimages <laughs> to Graceland. Well, as long as that's going to do something for your spiritual life. <laughs> okay, so it has to do something for your spiritual life. I think life. so, mm -hmm. yes. And that um, you're going to be making sacrifices um, and penances as you travel along. Okay, yeah, and I want to find out about that. But So wait, what, what motivated you and your husband David to walk... 650 kilometers. Sounds a bit flippant, but it's because we wanted to. That's mm -hmm. and and the reason comes the deeper reasons come as we walked. But independent of each other, before we'd even met each other, we had heard of this pilgrimage. And and it, and both thought to ourselves, at some point this is something that we want to do. Mm -hmm. So fast forward, we've met each other, we're married, and this opportunity presents itself mm -hmm. and we said yes we th let's make so this, this happen sounded like something something good to do something good to do After but we knew something good would come would out come of it okay. as well mm -hmm. um, yeah. and so when we started walking and and very quickly realized how difficult it is and and we knew going into it that it would be difficult we didn't have any illusions that this was just going to be a walk in the park mm -hmm. um, we realized that God really does work on you um, as you make this journey. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just hold on to that because I want to get back to that. Chris, what motivated you then to walk 800 kilometers? Mm. Well, um, going back to the length, uh, consider that, that people in Europe were traveling from various places. Mm -hmm. So so actually there's different routes that go from, mm -hmm. from Paris, from Germany, from Italy. So the 800 kilometers isn't so important. It's just where people happen to, to come from. Yeah. Uh, for myself, I think it was really finding that, that time for, for prayer. Um, being able to to every day to be able to walk with God, but I don't think I exactly knew for sure the reasons why I felt called to do it, what pulled me there. And for a lot of the pilgrims who I met, it was very similar. So yes, the destination was really important, but the reasons are maybe somewhat mysterious. Mm -hmm. And that's I, I like what you said there about the call. Mm -hmm. Both you of us felt, felt drawn, drawn yeah. there, but not really knowing why. And you know what? And I and I felt drawn there by St. James. Um, I really okay, did. See, you keep coming back mm -hmm. to this. And do you feel the same way about um, this connection with St. James? We didn't have any particular devotion to St. James, um, and and I still don't. One of the reasons that we have kind of worked through five years later mm -hmm. why we went is because we appreciate his discipleship, and mm -hmm. we hope to be disciples as he was. Um, and so here we are walking this path, um, meeting people, continuing the work of St. James as we mm -hmm. go along, which is, it's an honor. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, we go there as pilgrims um, to learn and, and to pray, mm -hmm. um, but, but know that our walking is also making a statement about the faith and about who St. James is and about his mission and about the mission and the discipleship, discipleship of Jesus. So what is it about being on a journey that that involves sacrifice and blisters and 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 maybe not sleeping very well mm -hmm. or eating very well that draws you closer to God or makes you a better disciple. What 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 is that? What is about that experience? Part of it is being part of of history, being being going on a pilgrimage that's that's lasted for so many hundreds of years and that connects you to a person who was there mm -hmm. with Jesus. But also, so you mean also a connection with all the other pilgrims who've walked? Exactly. So a connection with them, a connection with Jesus, it, it all comes together and you're walking this route that is, that is so very old and certain sections of it have been particularly preserved that are kind of alongside mm -hmm. the actual route. And, uh, and certainly our experience of the pilgrimage is very different today because it's significantly more comfortable, yes. there's <laughs> yes. more commodities, yeah. Yeah. but still it is a very difficult experience for any of us who are used to our very you know, comfortable Western existence. Mm -hmm. Did you feel the same way, that there was something about those specific sacrifices that draw you closer to God or give you more opportunity to encounter God? Oh, certainly, yes. Um, whether it is 
being hungry, being tired, mm -hmm. getting those blisters on your feet, um, sleeping in a place where a lot of people are snoring and you, you just want to have a good night's yeah. sleep. Yeah. All those sacrifices, yes, as little as they sound, they are drawing us closer to God. And it was part of this um, experience that my husband and I were participating in and, and really desiring to pray through those things, to offer up all those sacrifices. Um, every day we started, it, it began with we would start our day this way, but eventually it was we would pop it in wherever we could fit in. We would mm -hmm. pray the rosary mm -hmm. um, together and we would offer that up. We had a specific intentions in mind for each day, um, family members back home, particular situations. And we really felt that as we walked and as we experienced all those, the hardships that presented themselves, mm -hmm. we were our prayers were that much stronger, that they were that much authentic. fervent. Yeah, yeah authentic yeah. is a good word. Um, and that you know, we could feel our lives changing and we could feel the people that we were praying for, their mm. lives changing in some way. We were far from home and we were far from our family, but in many ways we felt closer to them than we ever had. It was <gasps> phenomenal. How much of the experience is the fact that you're, I mean, maybe not necessarily alone because you might be walking with other people, but there is an element of, of 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 aloneness or or i i don't want to say maybe like the wilderness experience or desert experience or ascetic experience that you're getting rid of things that you don't really need mm -hmm. how much of that is part of the experience chris that helps you encounter god well i did really appreciate that and initially i felt very silly in the airport in paris with uh with just the one uh set of clothes that i was going to be wearing for the rest of the month surrounded by these you know very and beautiful, sophisticated Parisians. <laughs> but soon I entered this world where everybody else was just wearing basically the one or two mm -hmm. uh, sets of clothes that they brought with them. Uh, you don't have the opportunity really to buy anything because you're, you're too busy offloading anything extra <laughs> yeah, that's, that's exactly. in your bag. Yeah, exactly. Okay, we're going to take a little break. This is good, but I have lots of, lots of other questions. Don't go anywhere. Short break. When we come back, we're going to learn a little bit more about Jillian's experience. So stay tuned. Let us know your perspective. Email us at perspectives at saltandlighttv.org or reach us by mail. Perspectives at Salt and Light Television, 114 Richmond Street East, Toronto, Ontario, M5C1P1 or call us toll free at 1-888-302-7181. Let your perspective be heard. The best marriage retreat ever. That's how my husband and I describe our Camino experience to anyone who asks. Because when you imagine repeating days of seemingly endless road with just one person by your side, holding your hand as you allow God to move you each step, well, isn't that marriage and isn't that the Camino? This was our honeymoon, these 25 days walking the long road to Santiago. Just newly wed, we thought to give our marriage to God on this Camino. We started each day with fresh faces and great hope. We battled terrain, injury, pride, each other. We prayed daily rosaries, offering up our family and friends with each painful yet grace-filled step. We prayed for our children to be. We named those unborn babies and dreamed of their futures. We walked in silence, in step, in laughter, and in love. It rained and snowed, and the wind blew, and the sun shone. We marveled at, were humbled by, and overwhelmed with God's gifts for us and the packages they came in. We breathed in the clean, fresh air of the Spanish countryside and soaked in the sights of mountains and vineyards and farmland and eucalyptus groves. We felt frustration, exhilaration, solitude, and peace. We felt the powerful love and prayers of family and friends move us forward. And the miles still stretched ahead of us. Yes, isn't that marriage? And isn't that the Camino? To walk the road before us, mustering determination and grace with the ones we love beside us. best marriage retreat ever. I mean, uh, how much of this experience of what makes it a pilgrimage is that it parallels our life journey? I mean, you want to answer? I do. That's a perfect question based on what I was Because it's not just your marriage journey, but I mean, everybody's 
life journey. Yeah. Is that what makes it a pilgrimage? Um, I would say it is, um, a, it's a reflection of the life that you live mm -hmm. on a grander scale. So what we were experiencing, my husband and I, as we walked together, I look back now and I realize that is playing itself out every day mm -hmm. in our household. Um, the, the role that he took on the Camino, the role that I took on the Camino, um, as we partnered together to be able to make our journey. Mm -hmm. um, we ended up not walking 680 but 500 because of injury. We are constantly living that out every day, um, uh, fitting into those same roles. And, and to experience that at the beginning of our marriage um, and to yeah, really good, establish that this is how yeah. it's going to be, this yeah. is how our lives Maybe are going to work. Maybe should have been marriage prep. <laughs> <laughs> Find out, do I really want to be married to this person? Now, Chris, you're, you're not married, you walk by yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Would you say that it's the same thing, that there's a life parallel? Definitely. I think that when I went, I was expecting something very otherworldly and very different from my from my day-to-day -day experience, um, thinking that I was going to be alone the whole time. Mm -hmm. And so it didn't bother me, the, I, the notion of going there by myself. The real reason I went by myself is it's very difficult to find someone else who can take that mm -hmm. amount of yeah. time yeah. off yeah. And, yeah. and go, someone who you'd want to be with. I would have gone with you. You never asked. Well, hmm. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> you have to find your walking partner. Yes, right? exactly, yes. exactly. Yes. But I found that most of the people who were there on the Camino, and this really surprised me, most of the people were like myself. They went there alone, and uh, that community quickly emerged right. among us. And so, so you really have to, to learn what your role is within this particular community. And I found that even though I went with my own spiritual purpose, um, I found that it was a wonderful opportunity to share my faith with many of the other mm -hmm. pilgrims mm -hmm. uh, who were there, who, who were not necessarily Catholic, religious people yeah, at all, yeah. not even Catholic. Mm -hmm. And also I felt very much that, that I was there to, to pray for other people. I don't mm -hmm. know if you, can, mm -hmm. if, if you also received a lot of prayer requests. Yeah, Probably, yeah. yeah. How hard was it? How many times did you just want to give up? Uh, we started with great enthusiasm and vigor. I think in the guidebook that we had, it said somewhere about if you were um, fairly athletic, then you could walk. I can't even remember now, X number of kilometers per hour. So David and I, are, we feared we are strong and athletic. We can do this. We practiced. We, no problem. David's an Olympian. Yeah, well, yeah. not quite, yeah. but uh, Almost, Team Canada, yes, volleyball yeah. player. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but he, yeah, yeah we, yeah, we went out too fast, jog, too yeah. hard, and actually it was me taking the lead. I would power up those mountains like crazy. And then what happened? Well, I ended up with tendonitis. He so ended up with cellulitis. Yeah. Both of us. Yeah. His left leg, my right leg. So together we oh. could have completed it, but we really needed to take a few days of rest. Um, and that was so good for our pride and mm. all part of Life God's journey. plan in this, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then once we started again, once we were able to take those days of rest, um, heal ourselves, and start out with this renewed idea of how mm. we can go about this and, and what is our, our plan for each day, how many kilometers can we actually walk, it turned itself around. And we had the last 10 days were so spiritual, powerful, amazing, every mm -hmm. superlative you can think of, um, that on the second last day when we were about to start praying our daily rosary, I started crying because I didn't want it to end. I wanted right. every yeah. day to yeah. be like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but what some friends pointed out when we returned was that our every day would be like this. On mm -hmm. the Camino, during one of our many, many conversations, David and I really became aware of our call to become parents, not just mm -hmm. husband and wife, but to be mom and dad. Mm -hmm. and. And I'm going to cry. <laughs> um, and we, I can remember vividly one day saying to him, I'm ready. I'm totally ready for this. I want to be a mom. Um, and and s we ended our journey and, and fortunately a few months later found out, yes, we we're expecting a baby. And some friends of ours said to us, so your pilgrimage really continues. On the pilgrimage, yeah. the walk to Santiago, it was every day, get up, pray, make yourself comfortable as, as comfortable as you can and get yourself to the next day's, mm -hmm. to the end of the day's destination. She said, that's exactly what parenting is. Get up, take yeah. care of yourself, take care of mm -hmm. your people and get yourself to the end of the day, to mm -hmm. the next destination. And so I'm really looking at my every day now as a, as a mom, as a pilgrimage yeah. to get my kids safely to the, yeah. the end of the day. Yeah. No, that's good. So yeah, so life is a pilgrimage. What was the hardest thing for you? I was very fortunate in terms of health. I didn't have some of the, the health problems that, that I saw many of the other pilgrims experience. Some of them just walking in total agony. You could see it, yeah. every single footstep really hurting them. And you really definitely learn to, to rely on, on the grace of God and know that it's something that you can't do alone because there are so many different things 
that can happen to you in terms of your health, um, in terms of the weather, um, all these things that, that can make your pilgrimage very difficult. And so that is one thing I really uh, learned to do is really to rely on God's grace to be able to get through it. It sounds like what you're saying, I mean, because some people would say that a, that a lot of what the pilgrimage is about is about the journey. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like there's as much to do with the destination that you have to get to the finish line or to that, at the end of the day, get to your destination. Uh, how would you balance those two? I'd say that the journey, um, well, the destination is all part of the journey, if that makes any sense. Because it's the end of the day, and then next day the, de the journey is continuing. So the destination, the daily destination, is just pinpoints along the way. And we experience those in, 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 daily, in life. daily life as well, yeah. like particular milestones mm -hmm. or just the end of the day if you're that tired and just want to get to the end of the day. But those are the, the pinpoints on that map um, that just allow you that little bit of rest so that you can prepare yourself again for the next day's journey. So you can focus on the journey, but focusing on the journey helps you focus on the destination. Focusing on the destination helps you focus on the journey. I would add to that, um, what does St. James want? Why would St. James want us to go venerate his relics? Why would he be drawing people along this pilgrimage? I think what he ultimately wants is, as an apostle, for us to get to know Jesus and for us to deepen our relationship with Jesus. And that is what happens every day on that pilgrimage is that you spend more and more time with with God and and I think that should ultimately be be the goal is when you when you reach his relics you've got a renewed relationship with Jesus and that's what I felt in my own life. Okay do you have to go on that pilgrimage the Camino or any pilgrimage can I live that date I mean there are people who do the labyrinth and they you know the Irish the, they walk the labyrinth and you can spend and that's a sense of pilgrimage and I've done them and had I can't say that it was a sim I mean, a, the same experience, but a similar experience in terms of the highs and lows, the struggles, the time alone, the, you know, whatever issues people are dealing with. Can I do that at home? Do I have to go and walk for two weeks or four weeks? I would say that. no. I would say mm -hmm. no, you don't have to. But it is an experience worth having if the opportunity presents itself. Certainly don't turn it down thinking, I can just do this at is home. Is it easier to encounter God through that experience than trying to recreate something, that pilgrimage journey at home here? I would never say easier. I don't well, know. I mean, you shouldn't do a pilgrimage that you're not called to. Many people um, have responsibilities for which they basically can't leave for a month to go on a walking pilgrimage. Mm -hmm. It's just not possible for them. But I do think that God wants us to step outside of our comfort zone and to make a leap of faith. And however that is, uh, even if it means setting aside uh, some of what we think is very, very important day to day uh, to be able to, to do that, then we have to listen to God's call. So even if that means taking time out, going on retreat, yeah. um, silent retreat, anything like that, any experience like that, because those experiences are more conducive to an encounter with God? And, and like Chris said, they take you outside of your comfort zone and yeah, they really it challenge you. Yeah. So just in closing then, because it sounds like you're saying that it's not necessary, but it helps yes. to have an encounter yeah. with God. Oh, definitely. In terms of our, our pilgrim journey towards mm -hmm. heaven. Yeah? Okay, we're going to conclude, as we always do, by leaving the last word to the one who is the word. So here is a uh, passage from uh, Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapters. Uh, chapter 5, verses 5 to 9. He who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please Him. So that's 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5, verses 5 to 9. Chris. It's funny that you chose that passage, and I know you were looking at many different many passages to, to end the program because I didn't mention this earlier, but I think one of the main motivating factors for me to walk the pilgrimage was to restore my confidence in God, my trust in God, and to really be confident and sure that this path that He's calling me on is is the one that's for me and he's not going to leave me astray. Wow, thanks. Julian? Um, definitely, you have to walk the, any pilgrimage by faith and not using any of your other senses, really. Mm. Um, you are, mm. are blinded by God's love for you, otherwise you would not be able to keep going. It's hard and you might get just all those 
personal things that being too tired, too selfish, too lazy would stop you from going. And so you really have to just let go of it all, let go of those senses and just hang on to God, walk yeah. toward Him. Trust, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I hope that this has been enough information for you to be intrigued enough to go find out about the Camino. Anybody can walk it. It's a great experience and it's as easy as just typing Camino Santiago in your search engine and you will find lots of resources, lots of guidebooks and, and stuff out there. Uh, we've been speaking to two Camino alums, alumni, Krista Matrenko, Salt and Light uh, producer, and Jillian Cantor, former Salt and Light producer. Um, and as always, we love to hear from you. Remember, you can uh, send us your perspectives through Facebook at our Facebook page. Thank you for being with us, and may God continue to bless you and your home.